Barrow Willick, a speck on the map in Victoria's dusty heartland. It's an unlikely place to produce a hero of Australia's great race, but the 2015 Melbourne Cup yields so many unlikely scenarios that they could run 150 cups and never have another like this. Prince of Penzance, it's history at Fleming and Michelle Payne. It has been a great year for women in sport around the world, and this tops the lot. Stevie Payne, the strapper. This is one of the greatest chapters that has ever been written in the history of the race, and boy, there's been a few. I think we can all be privileged just to have witnessed this. And this young lady and this brilliant trainer, Darren Weir, who's done the hard yards like nobody else. This is a dream come true for a Barrow Elite boy. And they've combined today to win the best thing possible in Australian racing and nearly the world now to Melbourne Cup. The public embraces the romance of their stories. In the weeks afterwards, the cup is shared by more people than any other in living memory. Fairy tales can happen, and this fairy tale belongs to the people. Michelle Payne has created history at Flemington, the first lady to win the Melbourne Cup. I go to 60 kilometres an hour, you're going to uh, drop the filler. It's going like last week's pay. She's going, isn't she? Yeah. The story begins on a better than usual Ballarat morning. We're travelling with Paddy Payne Sr., a hard bitten old trainer, watching his young track rider. She's your baby, Paddy. She's the baby. Come along all right? Yes, i uh, got a fair bit to learn, but um, up till now going OK. This is Michelle Payne, half her lifetime ago. She's 15 and she's just dropped out of school to work for her trainer dad. Isn't that a good life for a kid? I think it's a good, healthy life, and it's, uh, you know, they're busy at it. So they don't get into any other trouble. Tough, though. Yeah, it does, it does a tough, tough go. Well, she's 15 and she's your youngest. I mean, did you did you want to talk her out of it? I wouldn't have minded. I wouldn't have minded, but it didn't work. So could you have talked her out of it, Paddy? Uh, well, I suppose, how could I? The rest of all had to go, and how could I stop her? As soon as uh, Michelle comes back, if she'll get straight onto this one, he's ready to go. Stevie's got him going? Stevie's bloody top man, Stevie. Is he your foreman? He's a, to he's a top man. He's a foreman, stable hand, part owner, everything. Michelle and Stevie are the youngest of ten children to Pat and Mary Payne. But the family was devastated in 1986 when Mary was killed in a car accident while driving her older kids to school. Michelle was six months old then. She was still in nappies? Yes, she was, yeah. She was being breastfed when, when uh, her mother was killed and uh, that was a worry. But she came through good, took the bottle straight away. It would have been a big, big shot for her, like she was six months old, getting breastfed. You were a baby when your mum was killed, weren't you? Yeah, I think all the kids helped out and it wasn't too bad. Bernadette used to look after me. <laughs> At 15, Michelle was an old hand at washing dishes. Oh, shit. <laughs> so who fixes things when they break around that house? Um, well, Dad calls himself Mr Fix-It, but he usually makes it worse. <laughs> While she washed, her dad led a horse around the paddock. It's most of the you don't like doing, but it's all right. Were you always going to be a jockey? Yeah. Did you ever think of doing anything else? Um, no, not at all. <laughs> we were 15, was it a big call to leave school and become a jockey? Um, not really, because I've been thinking about it since I was ever, forever, so... What sort of jockey would you like to be? Um, just the best I can be. <laughs> just let them so long, safely as you can, comfortably as you can. She was 15 when she rode in her first race, a winner. 
Growing up in the Payne household was rough and tumble. We're not a lovey-dovey family. Like we fight and and um, like are very hard on each other. Like we'll be fighting, crying one minute, and two minutes later, everyone will be laughing and, and, and joking about it the next. So you and Andrew would have had a few fights. We've had plenty of blues over the time. The Payne boys' blues were so legendary they even put on a charity fundraiser. They'd have a decent fight and they'd call for each other some terrible names and half an hour after you wouldn't know that ever happened. Eight of the ten kids became jockeys. And in 1994, five siblings competed in one race at Ballarat. Paddy won, Therese second and Marie third. Paddy Jr. became a top jockey and trainer. Andrew rode and trained Melbourne Cup runners. And the irrepressible Stevie has enjoyed plenty of victories. The family album is brim full of memories, including one of a little girl, the youngest in the tribe, who's done it the hard way. Just like Michelle Payne, Darren Weir is 15 when he drops out of school to plunge into racing. His first employer, Birchip trainer Jack Coffey, recalls how Darren's mother reacted. As you can understand, <laughs> Mum's wasn't real good because she wanted a boy to finish his education. <laughs> <laughs> what did Mum say? I'll never forget that the, uh, night I dropped him off and he told her that he wasn't going to back to school. <laughs> so, after a while, as I slipped across the lawn very quickly to my car, the final words she announced was, what will there be in racing for him? At 18, we treks to stall to work for Terry O'Sullivan. When Darren arrived at our place, he, he arrived riding one and leading one because uh, his vehicle had broken down. The teenager had ridden the horse eight kilometres. I hadn't seen him ride a horse before he arrived, so I knew that he could ride when he rode bareback, riding one and leading one. He's a horseman. He certainly was, uh, no doubt about that. I hadn't seen a bloke his age work as hard as him. He'd ride work for me, then he'd do his breakers, and then he'd go shoeing all day. He'd come home at 8 o'clock at night. Oh, jeez, he worked hard. When Weir obtains a training licence in 1995, he does all his own shoeing, riding and training. These days, the laconic country bloke watches over a burgeoning business. Righty-o, we're going three. One, two, three. With a bustling complex at Ballarat and the sand and surf of his warnable operation, Weir employs as many staff as his hometown of Berrawillick has people. And he engenders fierce loyalty in his team. Darren is a genius. He's an absolute genius. I could not want to be anywhere else, anywhere in the world. I, he, he looks after his staff um, just as well as he looks after his horses. He's, he's just a down-to-earth bloke. That's what everyone loves about him. He just he says it how it is and he's a great man and an absolute horseman. Michelle Payne has fought a continual battle against adversity. When she was just 18, she fell head first at the end of a race and was left with a fractured skull and bruising on her brain. Yeah, it was a big shock to the system and the doctor told me I wouldn't ride for 12 months and I remember for the first week waking up every day telling them, oh no, I'm all right, I think I'm all right to ride. And I drove the nurses mad telling them that I was fine. The concern was that she had another fall that might be the end of her, so, so we were really worried about all that and we tried to talk her out of it. But in the end, we just thought, well, you're not living unless you're doing what you want to do, and if she wants to do it, she, she should be doing it. Well, that, I think Patrick's right. If you can't live your life doing what you want to do, just in fear of something happening, well, there's no point living. In 2005, just four years after he built his Ballarat stables, Weir produces a Melbourne Cup roughie named She's Archie. It's what every trainer would sort of dream of, to win a Melbourne Cup. Uh, 
uh, we're not thinking about winning it. We're just th hoping that the horse can uh, can run really well and uh, finish in the top ten. The fast finishing she's Archie almost spoils a racing fairy tale. Michelle endures more serious accidents. But at age 24, she wins the Turak handicap on the Bart Cummings trained LA Wonder. LA Wonder diving through, Bart's done it. LA Wonder wins from either Gold Salute or Rockington. She Rock then Kingdom. becomes just the fourth female jockey ever to ride in the Melbourne Cup. Michelle Payne, she's riding in the Group 1 form of late, aboard one of three Bart Cummings trained horses, LA Wonder. Paddy Payne, her older brother, rode in eight Melbourne Cups. Andrew, another brother, rode in a Melbourne Cup. She's the first Victorian jockey. It is a very well-known family here in Australia. We wish her well. Shocking with his head in front of crime scene. Shocking, drawing away. It's shocking to win the Melbourne Cup from crime scene. LA Wonder finishes 16th. Michelle's next taste of the Cup is six years later, aboard a warrior who's fought back from four leg operations and surgery for colic. The horse is Prince of Penzance. The rider, Michelle Payne. The strapper is brother Stevie. And the trainer, Darren Weir. Steve told me he's after barrier one or two, and he's picked barrier one. He has the magic touch, your brother. He certainly does. We, we said barrier one or two, and he's done a good job. He said one, you said, no, 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 two, when I asked you beforehand. He said, no, no, one. Don't <laughs> no, ever cross him. No, can't cross him, and um, hopefully it's a good barrier on Tuesday. Oh, good luck to Michelle Payne having a ride in the Emirates Melbourne Cup. Stephen Payne, you are a genius, you, my man. Can you, have you got a secret you can tell us how you did that? No, you're not. Let's try to pick one of the can. Too good. It's got it as simple as that. Thank you. Good on you, Steve. Well done to you. Yeah, perfect barrier draw. Um, really happy with that. It gives the horse a good chance to get into a, a nice spot and a nice rhythm and um, gives, him his, gives him his chance to run well. Michelle knows the horse really well. She's she's ridden him most of his career, so uh, I'm sure she'll have a plan, but uh, I'm not sure whether he's good enough, but I think he's good enough to run top 10. In just over 24 hours, the race will be run and won, but for now, the stars of the show have gathered in the city to be cheered on by crowds who've not been put off by today's wet weather. Well, I'm joined here with the trainer at Prince of Penzance, Ballarat's own Darren Weir. Weary, are you confident? Oh, well, we're happy we got him in the right order and um, we think the horse deserves his spot in the race and he's uh, from the good gate, he's going to get a good run and he's definitely a top 10 chance for sure. You love Michelle Payne as a jockey. Having her on tomorrow must give you a lot of confidence. Well, she's ridden the horse, I think, 22 out of its 23 starts, so she knows him well, gets on well with him. Um, from the good draw, she'll give him a good run and he'll get his chance and, uh, like I say, hopefully he's good enough to run top 10. Well, I'm joined here with the only female jockey in tomorrow's Melbourne Cup, Michelle Payne. Michelle, you're pretty excited? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's just a great thrill to be in our greatest race. And just, uh, I suppose, carrying the hopes of all the females, is there any extra pressure? Oh, probably a little bit. I don't want to um, do as badly in the, in the race, but um, no, I'm pretty confident we've got a good chance and hopefully everything goes well. It's just so exciting to be here. Obviously, it's been a race that I've watched from when I was a kid and um, used to get so excited. We'd stop at school every year and watch the race and um, to be a part of it's unreal. Will the drama be increased if uh, the one female in the field, 23 of the 24 contestants are male? Can Michelle Payne be the first female <laughs> jockey to ride a Melbourne Cup winner? Ooh, that would be a fairy tale. Be a Cathy Freeman moment if Michelle does win today. There's only five women have ever ridden in the race and she becomes the second to have ridden it more than once. Riding against the men in a Melbourne Cup, I guess that's something you've done before. Yeah, look, I ride against them every day and um 
sort of just, just it's, I'm used to it now. I've been riding for 15 years and pretty excited to get out there today and show them what I've got. Do you get nervous? Um, surprisingly, I'm not nervous at all this year. I don't know why. Um, it just been, the lead up's been perfect. Everything's working out really well. I feel great. I've had a couple of days to freshen up, a couple of days off, and yeah, I'm just so excited to get there and do my best. Be a surreal moment for you, Stevie, as the strapper, you as the rider in the mountain yard before a Melbourne Cup. Yeah, look, sometimes I pinch myself, even just at a normal Flemington meeting when Stevie's strapping him and we get a winner, and it, we just, I just think it's amazing. Like, from where we've come from, family of 10 kids, me and Stevie were always the youngest two, and um, it's so beautiful to be able to share that moment with him and unbelievable to be sharing it with him today in the Melbourne Cup. Steve, you've done the right thing. You've drawn barrier number one. Yes, I say good. And what do you reckon Michelle will do there? Just get a nice, cosy run? Yes, yeah, she will. She's so good. Now, tell me, you are strapping this horse. I believe that the owner said, we need Steve to strap because you're the lucky strapper. Yes, I hope so. Yeah. Now, tell us a bit about him. Is he good to deal with this boy? Yeah, very. Yeah. Is, yeah. He, is he nice and relaxed and placid? Yes, he is. And if he's not, then you look after him? Yeah, yeah. definitely. OK. Can he run in the first three or four? Do you think he can win? We're very close to it. Number one strapper in the business, Stevie Payne. <laughs> and rising to fame by the minute. Isn't it? What a character he is when we've uh, got to know him over the last few years. The racing world has broadened its horizons greatly in the past two decades. With the flood of internationals, winning the Melbourne Cup is much tougher than in the past. Not just for the horses, but also competing against the cream of the world's jockeys. Number eight is Max Dynamite, and it's always great to have Frankie Dettori back at Flemington. Yes, it's a great event today. I ride uh, Max Dynamite. It's a good stare from Europe, and uh, let's hope we have a good run. 19, Prince of Penzance, second Melbourne Cup ride for Michelle Payne. I think he's got a good chance. If he can settle in, in amongst the field, sort of from barrier one, have a nice resting run, he'll make his pre presence felt at the end. Number 19, Prince of Penzance, looking to provide a maiden Emirates Melbourne Cup for Darren Weir. He'll be ridden by a young lady making her second cup start. Say hello to Michelle Payne. So the 24-7 have already won the great race. They were born in eight different countries and for one rider it's his first and for another Jimmy Cassidy we know it's his final ride. For the last time, Jimmy the Pumper Cassidy. What a story it would be if Michelle Payne can ride her first Melbourne Cup winner in a second attempt in the race. The horse looks very well in the yard. Darren Weir after his first cup. Will it all gel together for the team from Ballarat? Out of the barriers and down that straight at Flemington. Field ready for the Empress. Oh, boy. Melbourne. Great race about to begin. Set. They're off. Trip to Paris jump well, so did the offer, and fame game being eased in the early part of the race. Away pretty quickly, who shot the Marvin Sartorius Criterion? Max Dynamite not too far away, down towards the inside. They're quite prominent. Over towards the outside, Quest for More is riding forward. Big Orange maintaining his line with excess knowledge on his outside, but they're both heading up towards the front-running horses. It's quite a bunch field, not a tremendous amount of speed about in the early part. Fame game's gone right back. He has about four or five behind him in his outside El Moon quit. Quest for More had crossed down to the rails and he has the lead, but they're not going particularly hard. Quest for More being joined by Big Orange. Excess knowledge out wide on the course. He's pasted deep without any cover. Snow Sky Pink Cam is fourth, and they're following Criterion on the inside, and Trip to Paris gets a nice run. A length and a half who shot the barman, Max Dynamite, and then Sky Hunter on the outside, about a length and a half further back in the field as Bondi Beach, Prince of Penzance, and Grand Marshal. Uh, back behind those horses then is our Ivanhoe on the inside and then Hocko, Brave, Red, Keto, Sartorius, the offer. A battling further back, Gust of Wind on the inside. They're followed then by the United States and Fame Game and well back in the field is El Moonquith. Hartnell the outside followed by Preferment and a length away is Kingfisher. He's at the tail end of the field. 
So they make their way along the riverside of the course now. And the field is being led by Big Orange now. He's out by two links. Excess Knowledge is second. Quest for More is third. Snow Sky is fourth. And Criterion getting a beautiful trail fifth. A length two trip to Paris. As they make their way by the 1600 metres next, Max Dynamite. Posted a little bit deep then, Sky Hunter followed by Who Shot the Barman, Prince of Penzance. Then came Grand Marshal, he'd be dead set, middle of the field at the moment. Being followed Bondi Beach out three wide and then Al, Al Ivanhoe being followed by Hocko Brave, a link further back as Red Cadeau. With him is the offer over on the outside as they make their way down the back of the course and about a length and a half further back in the field then is a gust of wind down on the inside. Uh, back behind those horses then is El Mooncrith as a fair way back in the field. Uh, Satorius was outside of Red Cadeau and they're followed now Fame Game. He'd be 20 lengths away from the leader. Uh, they're being followed then by Preferment at the end of the field. Kingfisher is still back last. Hartnell's about third last. Coming up the side of the course, they race before the home turn. Big Orange from Excess Knowledge. A length away then, Quest for More. Trip to Paris. He's working into it on the outside, and so is Snow Sky wide out. Then came Criterion trying to find a way through. Round the outside came Sky Hunter and Bondi Beach off the track as making ground two. Now Ivanhoe waiting for a run down on the inside as they bunch up around the turn. Now Fame Game, he's got to the extreme outside with the offer. Big Orange first for home from Excess Knowledge. Snow Sky joining in and now trip to Paris is coming. They're followed then by Who Shot the Barman going for a run on the inside as Al Ivanhoe. Coming past the 300 metres, Excess Knowledge went to the lead narrowly. Here's Prince of Penzance coming on down the outside. Prince of Penzance for Michelle Payne. Now Max Dynamite starts to charge home. Prince of Penzance for Max Dynamite. Prince of Penzance, it's history at Flemington, Michelle Payne. Prince of Penzance beat Max Dynamite. Criterion's run third, then either trip to Paris, gust of wind, or Big Orange, the next one's over. Michelle Payne has created history at Flemington, the first lady to win the Melbourne Cup. Remarkable. What an incredible chapter has been written here in the history of the great race. Stevie Payne, the strapper, picked out number one at the barrier draw. Michelle's brother there. Darren Weir, the trainer, has been so close before. It is a magic moment. Michelle, this is stuff you dream about as a kid and you've spent your life in horse racing. What a moment. Unbelievable, Sam. I lied in bed last night and I gave my chance a little time to think and dream about it. And I thought about it, imagine if I'm talking to you after these races. Unbelievable. It's like a dream come true. This horse is awesome. What he's been through is down here. Unbelievable training to get him here like this today. All of his staff, Jared and Maddie and Tyson and all of them down at Warrnambool, this is all to them because they got this horse here in the best shape he could be in and um, I'm just so grateful and thankful to them and all of the owners and well, this is just awesome. And Stevie Payne, the hero of this story, drawing barrier one and you're going to share this moment with him. That is just awesome. Stevie drawing one is probably the winning key to this. Don't know which barrier I would have picked and he picked the right one. Take it all in, Michelle. You've won the 2015 Melbourne Cup. Unbelievable. Thanks, Sam. Stevie Payne, you're the man of the moment. That's a great ride. It's great win, Michelle. She needs it. Don't just stand. Good luck for both and, and all, the, all the owners. And you and Michelle, the two youngest members of the Payne family, you live together. You drew the barrier one for her. Yeah. What a proud moment. That's a great moment. It's a great win and a great ride. 10 out of 10. And a great job by the strapper. Thank you. Stevie, congratulations. Thank you very You've much. You've got a Melbourne Cup. Yes, finally got one on the hand. This, this is one of the greatest chapters that has ever been written in the history of the race. And boy, there's been a few. <laughs> Have a look at Stevie. <laughs> what a phenomenal. Great I think we can all be privileged just to witness this. This, this is uh, this is something truly extraordinary. Yep, she's a star, Michelle Payne. Darren Weir, he's a star. And this horse is bred in New Zealand. They've come from all over the world to win this, and they couldn't beat the Kiwis. Just the most remarkable story 
We've had 300 to 1 winners win the race in the history. This is close to 100 to 1 today. We'll find out exactly what price this horse has started at. The Prince of Penzance, a horse that's been dogged by injury, came back. He had a great year last year. He really got himself into the cup with that great run at Mooney Valley. And this young lady who's ridden the horse 22 times before today, and this brilliant trainer, Darren Weir, who's done the hard yards like nobody else, and they've combined today to win the best thing possible in Australian racing and nearly the world now. It's a Melbourne Cup. <laughs> Michelle Payne, you've long supported her to give her a ride and become the first female jockey to win the Melbourne Cup. It's just an extraordinary achievement. Well, it is, but uh, <laughs> um, it is a, you know, but look, she's a great rider. She works hard behind the scenes. I've said it before, a lot of people are not that keen to give her the opportunity in these sort of races, but Sandy and John have supported her all the way through, plus all the other crew. And uh, she's done a lot of work behind the scenes on this horse. You know, there's plenty of trips to Warrnambool, to Rang, you know, down to ride one horse, two hours in the car there, two hours in the car back. So uh, it's great to reward her. What does this mean to you, Darren? <laughs> it's a lifetime dream come true, to be honest. <laughs> you know, um, once we ran second in it. Uh... <laughs> I can't believe it, he's just a superstar this horse, what he's been through and I felt he could do it but Darren said that they don't usually come back from colic surgery as good as what they were but he just come back better and big thanks to Jared and all his team down at Warrnambool, they got him here at all the tracks um, that we've galloped him on from Warrnambool to Cassidon to Terrain, Camperdown, Donald, Ballarat, everywhere has provided us with beautiful surfaces to get him here and we wouldn't have got here without them. Didn't want to stand up and go to the early crow. I thought he was tracking up beautiful, got a beautiful run through him, and uh, what an absolute thrill and what an absolute credit to the team that I have at home. You've come so close in this race. <laughs> did you ever think that maybe that's the closest you might come? Yeah, I did. Um, I must say it's got harder each year. It's, um, I keep saying to the owners, it's hard enough to get into the race, let alone win it, and um, just enjoy the day and uh, hope like hell we can run top ten. <laughs> I don't know, it was like it was meant to be. Everything just fell into place. I was going to stay on the back of the ones in front of me and they'll go back, gap opened up to one bit trip to Paris. I thought, well, I'm going to take that one. And then he was travelling that well, coming around the corner. I thought, he was actually pulling at like the six, six, seven hundred. And then when he burst the front, Darren, we drilled it into me, count to ten. And I was trying to wait as long as I could, but I had a light full of horse underneath me and he just burst to the front and I've never yelled so loud at a horse in my life. I dreamt about it from when I was five. Five years old and there's an interview which my school friends from Loretta were teasing me about when I was about seven that I said I'm going to win the Melbourne Cup and oh, I'm just going to win the Melbourne Cup and they always give me a bit of grief about it and uh, I just want to win the Melbourne Cup. Can't believe we've done it and um, to think that um, Darren Weir's given me a go when it's such a chauvinistic sport. I know some of the owners were keen to kick me off, for instance, and John Richards and Darren stuck really solid with me. I put in all the effort I could. I galloped him every gallop he had and did everything I could to stay on him because I thought he had what it took to take to run a race in the Melbourne Cup. And um, I just can't say how grateful I am to them and just want to say to everyone else who gets stuff because they think women are strong enough and we just beat the world. That's the spirit of a champion, isn't it? Oh, isn't that it? interview, that just shows you why she's so good. I love her attitude. Show it to all the men that she might be a female jockey, but she's just as good as all the rest of them. And she really showed it today. We say it's a life changer. In this case, this is so true. I mean, this young woman now will be known by every person in this country with this beautiful, smiling face, with such a great attitude. Michelle Payne is not only a Melbourne Cup winner today, she's a star. Let's hear it for Michelle Payne. It's not all about strength, it's a, so much more involved with that. It's getting the horse into a rhythm, it's getting the horse to try for you, it's, it's being patient and I'm so glad to win the Melbourne Cup and hopefully it'll, it'll help female jockeys from now on to get more of a go because I believe that we sort of don't get enough of a go and, and hopefully this will help. This is a dream come true for a Barrow Willick boy from the bush. The old man will be home watching, so big cheerio to the old man. I want to say thank you very much for everyone at the stables and all the crowd we had today at the races. And hope you have a great night. Thank you very much.
Well, what more can you say, eh? What a presentation, what a celebration. What a family and uh, what a story. As the Melbourne Cup is being presented, Peter Ellis is a man behind the scenes in the Weir camp. Peter, tell us your position. I'm the race tactician, uh, Neil. Yeah, I try and estimate where everything is going to be in the run, where you need to be to win, and where we have to put our horse to possibly win. Like in today's Cup, we were hoping to follow Max Dynamite criterion on the fence. He's out at the 300 and sort of put the race to bed from there. Michelle, do what you said? 100%. Well, she done a lot of hard work herself. I walked the track earlier and I thought the inside was as good as anywhere, and, but in the straight, anything up the right wide was fine, so. Ten of the last 15 Melbourne Cup winners have won the race from in that area there, where he is between 8th and about 14th. So, very happy to be there. The word speed maps is almost something that you pioneered. Yes, I've been doing it for about 30 years. So you just try and estimate where every jockey is going to be in the run and then take into consideration the very good of the track. So your role is to advise Darren Weir? Yeah, three years ago I started working for Darren. It's worked pretty well. And, uh, pretty so, well. We've got the Melbourne Cup being presented over there. Yeah, so no, so and uh, yeah, so all the city meetings and important country meetings, I do the speed maps and the tactics for those races for Darren. That move there at the 600 certainly one of the race where she got away from the fence and Max Dynamite was held up and had to get out from behind her and finish on. 10 out of 10, Ryan. In fact, you couldn't get a better ride. Copybook. And Michelle joins us along with Stevie. Michelle, um, heartfelt congratulations. It's been a long journey, hasn't it? But what a day. It has been a long journey, Bruce. Thank you so much. Um, I haven't even had a chance to see the replay yet, so to see that vision's just really making it sink in. Um, I dreamt about this horse, that he was good enough to win the Melbourne Cup after he won a race here as a three-year-old. He, he did things that horses don't do. He's like, he's just got this strength about him and I just felt he had what it took to win the Melbourne Cup and um, I dreamt about it ever since that day on him. A length and a half her shot the bomb and Max Dynamite and then Sky Hunter on the outside about a length and a half further back in the field as Bondi beats Prince of Penzance and Grand Marshal. I got up in behind Max Dynamite and got a little bit keen because the speed was coming back around the first corner as it does and I really wanted to switch him off because I felt that was our best chance we had and um, down the back straight he was pretty strong and I was thought just sit there and hold him. As they make their way by the 1600 metres next, Max Dynamite posted a little bit deep then Sky Hunter followed by Who Shot the Bum and Prince of Penzance. Just sat there and just held him and breathed and I was like right you're following Criterion and Max Dynamite, they're the ones you want to follow, don't panic, just stay on their back. Big orange first for home from excess knowledge. No sky joining in and now trip to Paris is coming. Darren said, when you get to the straight, if you're going good enough, count to ten. He drilled it into me about a week ago. Count to ten and I don't know what I got up to. Coming past the 300 metres, excess knowledge went to the lead narrowly. Here's Prince of Penzance coming up down the outside. Prince of Penzance for Michelle Payne. Now Max Dynamite starts to charge home. Prince of Penzance from Max Dynamite. Prince of Penzance. Stevie, how many horses do you look after? Don't know, I think I'm only 20 at home. Well, Stevie's been working with Darren's horses now for probably um, eight years, and the horses just are so relaxed with him. Darren says it's amazing, they just wander around with him. He, he, Darren says he looks down out of um, where he lives and it overlooks the walking machine in the pool, and Stevie's wandering along, and the horses are wandering alongside, and sometimes the leads drag along behind him, and he just laughs. But he just says the horses just respond so well to him. And um, walking around the mounting yard, Prince was so relaxed. He's a pretty fiery horse, and it was unreal. I was just like, this horse has never seen him so relaxed in his life. Oh. It's unbelievable. We are here to win the Melbourne Cup. Now you've won the Melbourne Cup. Amazing. <laughs> Stevie, Amazing. Eh? What a day, Stevie. What a day.
Darren's been such a great supporter of mine. Can't thank him enough for, for sticking up for me and for giving me a go because obviously it is a very male dominated sport. She kept saying, Oh, do you think I've done everything right? You know, how the owners coping with it all, do you think they're going to keep me on? But I just said to her, If you keep, keep riding it well, I have no excuse to take you off. So that's what she done all preparation, and then she rode it even better than that. You've just got to have confidence and, and keep getting up and keep getting up in the morning and show up to work, do the best you can and, and you know, that's all you can do and, and luck will come your way. Oh, look, it's been unbelievable. Um, I haven't had a chance to really answer my phone much because we've been, you know, media interviews and all that sort of stuff, but I had a look at my phone there before and there's 360 messages on it, so that gives you some idea of the support that we've been getting. Fittingly for a Melbourne Cup winner, Michelle's next ride is in a helicopter to Kyneton to ride in the local Cup. Pretty awesome. I feel a little bit like a movie star. Um, it, it's just been a whole whirlwind, the whole experience of the Cup. How does Fizzy feel about being placed in the same breath as Tommy <laughs> Well, when we were growing up, Stevie and I watched Farlap probably 500 times, so I'm pretty sure he was pretty wrapped about that. He, um, he used to, you know, if he ever rode, he'd be like taking off Tommy Woodcock when he's riding, come on Bobby Boy and all of that. So um, I'd imagine he'd be pretty happy about that right now. This is Warrnambool today. So Stevie Payne and Prince of Penzance are at Warrnambool. There's a race <laughs> meeting there. I think they're and, back at the races. <laughs> so <laughs> this is, you know, Prince of Penzance knows Warrnambool pretty well, doesn't he, with Weary Stables. And how good is this? I mean... What a coup. Yeah, this Warrnambool. is beautiful. And, for, and Stevie, of course, there with the cup. So they're the pride of that town as well as Ballarat, aren't they? No, it's look what, at that. It's just wonderful. <laughs> Melbourne Cup winners are usually locked in their stable or kept away from people. But in the weeks after the Cup, Prince of Penzance is paraded at town celebrations across Victoria. Not since the Eureka Stockade has Ballarat erupted like this. Darren Weir couldn't believe his tired eyes. There are a lot of things that you've never thought you'd see before, but this is one of them, I'm sure. <laughs> I didn't think I'd see that, but uh, uh, well, it's fantastic, isn't it? Uh, Stevie standing in front of the shrine, <laughs> holding up the cup, the horse going round and round in the middle of Sturt Street. <laughs> it's the middle of Sturt Street and uh, thousands of people. It's uh, unbelievable and uh, uh, it's great for Ballarat. How have you been going the last couple of days? How's the arm? <laughs> done a lot of handshaking. <laughs> yeah, done a lot of handshaking. Uh, a bit of elbow bending. Yeah, but it's been a terrific ride. Um, unbelievable feeling and... Uh, yeah, great thrill, I guess. Have you slept yet? I uh, haven't had a lot of sleep, but uh, we'll catch up at some stage. Are you worried about waking up and finding it was all just a dream? <laughs> yeah, you've got to pinch yourself every now and then to realise that it is happening, but uh, uh, it's just, just a great story all around, I think. Thank you. Have you let go of that cup since Tuesday? No, I haven't. You've just had a pretty tight grip on it. Yeah. I can't loosen it off, can I? Yeah. No. I can go, hey, but I don't think I can. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never let it go now, will you? No, I won't. Definitely not. Just look at the crowd that's turned out for it. It's, it's a Melbourne Cup crowd, you might say, isn't it? It is. How old's the baby? He's one month old. He's yeah. going to remember this, isn't he? He's very much going to remember this, and we'll be telling him about it for years to come. Because he won the sweep as well. He did. He won. He won the sweeps when he was one month old. It's right up there in Australia's sporting history. You know, it's as good as Kathy Freeman winning the gold medal. That's how I like him too. Well, she's our Kathy now, isn't she? She is. Yep. She's done a fantastic job. As the thousands enjoyed Ballarat's fairy tale, Cinderella arrived fashionably late for the ball. She told her adoring audience everything they wanted to hear. I'm nearly as much looking forward to the Ballarat Cup as the Melbourne Cup because if anything was going to be as special as that, it would be winning your hometown cup. And I absolutely can't wait to get out there. And I hope everybody comes along and, and has a great day. Thanks very much. The Cup heroes each received gold panning dishes. Well done, Stevie. Congratulations. Give him a big round of applause. Symbolic of Ballarat's 19th century origins. And not since the gold rush 
has this Victorian city seen so many smiles. How special is this? <laughs> this is just, it doesn't get much more special than this actually, apart from winning the Melbourne Cup. Um, to be greeted here with all of, well, so many people from Ballarat and such a, an overwhelming atmosphere, it's just unbelievable. <laughs> sport where women actually do compete against men. Um, it doesn't happen in tennis. Roger Federer doesn't play against Serena Williams and uh, Tiger Woods doesn't play against, I don't know, I don't follow golf enough so you have to help me out there, but, but Michelle's got to tee off against us. And as you can see, she was outstanding, right? If she got that half a length wrong or got too eager when she straightened up, she doesn't win the Melbourne Cup. It's that simple. Remarkable. What an incredible chapter has been written here in the history of the great race. Well, as someone who's crashed through more glass ceilings than most, what did you think of Tuesday? I thought Tuesday was great. It was a great ride. Uh, uh, I was delighted that Michelle was able to win the Cup. Uh, it's a wonderful thing to be a first in anything, and she was the first lady in uh, the history of the Melbourne Cup to, to, to greet the judge. Women are gaining ground all the time in racing, and, um, you know, there's a lot of track riders, trainers, vets, uh, strappers, so they certainly play a big part in the racing industry. Did she shatter the glass ceiling or has it still just got a crack in it? Um, I think it's a bit more than a crack. Um, I think it'll, it'll certainly open a lot of doors for her. And more females, do you think? Absolutely. The thing with the woman jockeys is also now it's going to help them. The strength's gone out of the game. Like, there's no possible way a Mick Dittman or a Darren Biedman or whoever in a finish with a girl, a girl could be as strong as them. But now, you're not allowed to hit the horse so much. So a little bit of strength's gone out of it, which makes it better for the woman. And they have very good balance on a horse. It's such a chauvinistic sport. I know some of the owners were keen to kick me off, for instance, and just want to say to everyone else can get stuff because they think women aren't strong enough and we just beat the world. What do you think it did for women in general? Oh, you know, often I think we're silent achievers and it's just the makeup of maybe being a woman that you prefer to get the job done and don't make a song and dance about it. And in actual fact, um, the industry already, we have so many track riders, probably nearly 50% of our track riders would be female. Um, there's women on every boards uh, of every club. Michelle is, it was brought up in a in society and racing, which has always been uh, a male-dominated sport, if we put it that way. Even mentality is going back to when Gay Waterhouse even had to beg to, for get, to get a licence to even get into the trainers' huts at Randwick to show you. But um, as you saw on race day... Um, is that going to change now, do you think? The chauvinism that? of racing? Oh, I think it's changed. Attitude, attitude in the community has changed. Uh, persuasion rather than using the whip for anything else as, as a tool for safety and for persuasion. And you can see that the that mentality is changing. It'll be a slow change, but it will come. And I think uh, the more women embrace racing and reach for the stars, which is what Michelle said we can all do, uh, it all helps. And they can all get stuffed. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> it has been a great year for women in sport around the world and particularly in Australia and this tops the lot. She's resilient, you know. She had a very bad fall some time ago. Uh, you know, she's 30 years of age, which a lot of uh, riders are thinking of retiring. Michelle's uh, probably a lovely finish to her career because she said announced the other day that she would be taking out a trainer's license and it's a lovely sort of stepping stone from her riding days into into this. What advice would you give Michelle now? I just say, if you think riding was hard, wait till you take up the training reins. <laughs> <laughs> With Michelle, would you give her any advice? No, I'm going to go back and watch her replays next time I'm programmed for here. She doesn't need any... That rice was outstanding, even the way that she handled herself afterwards. She doesn't deserve any advice. 
she's what we aspire to want to be like after the way she handled it and conducted herself. And an inspiration for women. Yeah, and stop beating us on the race track, Michelle. I want to win one too. <laughs> She had centre stage after the Melbourne Cup and, and good luck to her. She had some things that she wanted to say and and she said them, um, very forthright. And I think the majority of people thought, well, you know, good on her. And it was great to see and it'll go down in, in Melbourne Cup history as a, a, an extraordinary event, a magnificent moment and one that Michelle Payne certainly struck a blow for female jockeys. Michelle is the baby of a very stoic, down-to-earth family. I'd bet my bottom dollar that this won't change Michelle Payne very much at all. The only thing it'll change is the, um, the bank balance. For us, we thought it was amazing to win the Melbourne Cup, but to see the faces of other people just touching the cup, it, you know, they're the images you remember. It was just, it, you know, it's surely the People's Cup, this one. It was unbelievable. The 2015 Spring Racing Carnival ends with Darren Weir announced as Premier Trainer. His nominated charity, Down Syndrome Victoria, receives a $25,000 donation. Stevie's been in our stable for about eight years. You know, it's just an important message to get out there that, that these kids can, can hold an important role um, in any position if, if you give them the chance. Throughout the carnival, Weir has often referred to his Mallee home. This is a dream come true for a Barrowillick boy from the bush. And to everyone at Barrowillick, I hope you get as much thrill out of this as what I have. Today, he's going back to Barrowillick. Hey, is that any good, Maxie? Yeah, I can hear you. Right. It's your store closed down yep. six months ago. End of June. Your pub a month ago yeah, closed. Yeah, yep. So things were looking pretty crook. I wasn't sure whether I was, and I might say it later in the day, whether I was the um, devel community development group or we the community salvage group. But <laughs> <laughs> What's the population, Chris? I think it's around about 120 or 30, yeah. Yeah, 100, 120 or 30. So yeah. they'll all be here. Oh, I'd imagine there'll be a few that, you know, obviously it's, just, it's their livelihood that they're doing at the moment and they want to get the crop off, but I'd imagine most would be, yeah. Everyone has a story of DK Weir. Even when we were having fun up here, ripping around on horses up in the, the old golf course, we all had Melbourne Cup dreams and we'd all race, but we'd race for a can of Coke and a Mars bar, <laughs> you know? And as you can see, I won a few. <laughs> well done, well done. <laughs> yeah, but I think we really but, got more than what a can of Coke and a Mars bar off the other three blokes. His dreams came true. Oh, it's great. It's the best thing, it really has. And we're all wrapped for him, the whole town of Berrawillick and the whole Mallee just took out Bottom jaws from the bottom of the bitumen, we're riding up about two foot above the sky. In typically humble style, Darren wanted a quiet celebration, but half the Bull Oak Shire has rolled up. Everyone wants to see Prince of Penzance, and they want to see what the local boy has in his calloused hands. The triumphant hero has returned, but he's looking sheepish and the locals have gone to a lot of trouble. So I just got home and changed it to something a bit respectable. Yeah. Got back in with a red mat for Darren and yes, to walk on. He's worth a bit red mat, isn't he? Oh, he's worth a red mat, all right, yes. Well, and it's call a... it a carpet. Oh, <laughs> it's the best we could do. You know, to round up a red carpet's a bit hard. <laughs> so I thought, oh, I've got a red mat, huh? Oh, yeah, that'll do. It's nice to come home, but didn't expect this, to be honest. <laughs> oh, I think they expected it. They've been preparing for days. Oh, well, it's nice of them to, nice of them to put it on. It's, uh, it's great to come back and uh, share, share the cup with them. I think they think it was nice that you mentioned Barry Willick so often on Cup Day. <laughs> Obviously means a lot to you. Oh, absolutely. Great, great little place to grow up and a uh, great little community. So uh, more than happy to bring it back and uh, share it with them. And these are your people. Absolutely. Yep, great people. At Darren Weir's homecoming to Barry Willick, the memories are flowing. If there was anything in trouble, he was always in part of it. If there was a broken bone, it was always him that had the broken bone. If there was stitches, there was always stitches. Everything. So it was always Darren. So the Melbourne Cup doesn't surprise no, you? not really. Not really. Well, in, in the big perspective of it all, it does. His work ethic was fantastic. And like, I like the rest of the boys here, I only played a sp small part in steering him into racing and everything, and I'm as proud as shit of him, and and uh, I'm I'm proud that I just played a small part in Weary's life. At least they know now he comes from Berrawillie, not from Birchip, not from Stall, 
not from Ballarat or Miners Rest. He's ours, TK Weir, Mayor of Burrawalli. It's obviously a dream for a trainer to win a Melbourne Cup. My dreams come true. One thing I can tell these kids, all these school kids that are here today, is every now and then dreams come true. Follow them. This was probably the pinnacle of it all, I would say. Um, he wanted to come back to the little Berry Willick pub and just have a few beers with nobody else around, just his mates in the cup and show it off. But this is what happens. To Darren Weir. Yeah. Hip hip. Yeah. Hip hip. Yeah. Hip hip. Yeah. Hip hip. Yeah. Speech is over, they're off to the Golden Crown Hotel, even though it shut down a month ago. Now it's being resurrected for Weary's homecoming. The pup has brought optimism, where a few weeks ago there was gloom. In the climate that it's in now for this to happen is just amazing. What are the odds of this pub becoming the Prince of Penzance and having a new life? I'd say be a 90% chance here. <laughs> like any fair dinkum country yarn, this one ends with a ballad. The boy from the bush and the girl from Miner's Rest. Weary's grain farmer mate, Gum McLean, on a railway siding at Berry Willick. Now Weary's back in his hometown. And he put the cap on the bar in the golden crown. Well, can you hear Barry Willie cheer? We're all back in decay. One homecoming is followed by another. 12,000 flock to the 2015 Ballarat Cup. Well, this is how racing should be, isn't it? Absolutely, Neil, yeah. Um... Great day for all our owners here today and um, just a good get together and um, a few beers and a barbecue. Did you say to Michelle before the cup that be prepared for this to change your life? <laughs> well, I, I just sort of, sort of said to her, um, if you happen to win it, it probably will. You know, <laughs> but but uh, I said, don't think that'll be happening. So, <laughs> you know, to think he was going to win, dreaming really. Darren, we did say to you, I think lightheartedly, to prepare yourself for a life changing event. Has it changed? certainly has. Um, obviously, I didn't really think about it too much because you sort of, you dream and hope that you win the Melbourne Cup and I did have a good feeling about it but you really don't really think when, if it does happen, what it's going to be like. The rituals of race day riding never change, but Michelle has new purpose. Have you had people come up to you and say, I was inspired by your remarks? Yes, I have and that's probably been the most amazing part about it because after the race, after winning the race, I just felt that, for me, the best part about it is that, is that people are inspired to follow their dreams and their goals. Even older people, doesn't matter about young or old, um, so many people said it's lifted their hopes and that's just been, gives me goosebumps to even just think that that has changed their life and, and for young children and young apprentices with dreams and young sports people, it's just, it's so nice that it has lifted people's hopes and given them um, well, they can see it, it does happen. Are you happy now to become that kind of role model? Oh, absolutely. Um, I feel that maybe it happened for a reason and I feel that it happened when I was probably older and a bit more mature to be able to handle everything and um, I'm just so lucky that God chose me to be the one to, to promote racing and sportswomen and women in general. It's, um, I'm just, yeah, obviously just so grateful and I, I feel like I'm blessed. Has it done the same for you? Has it made you feel more outgoing? Oh, I don't know about outgoing. I haven't changed. I was outgoing enough before. <laughs> Just need a bit of few grogs in me to make me <laughs> get outgoing. But uh, nah, it's been it's been an amazing ride, and uh, yeah, wish everyone could uh, you know feel feel and experience what I've been through in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> So what you said on the day, was that spontaneous or something where you've gone, one day if I win a Melbourne Cup, I will say something? I guess I did think about it and um, it obviously in the moment, it, on a whim, it just come out and... Um, how, how many people have told you to get stuffed <laughs> since? <laughs> it's been a pretty big deal. Um, a lot of people were really happy with the comment and it's not something I regret. She says it's changed her life, Stevie. Yeah, it has. You're still working hard for Darren Weir, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I love doing it. You love doing it. 
You'll just keep doing it forever. Yeah, definitely. Our family's so blessed to have Stevie and it's great to be able to share him with the rest of the world. It's almost like you've received more pleasure out of seeing Stevie enjoy it than your own. Oh, absolutely, yep. Just to just to be up there and to be able to share that, share that experience with him who we've been so close our whole lives and um, it's just funny to think two little kids that used to run around together on the main stage betting, betting all the horses that come from around the world. It's, it's absolutely incredible. Thank you. Well done, Michelle. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.